It's Wednesday, October 19th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Today, a one-on-one interview with Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. Our Nick Ionelli caught up with Youngkin campaigning in Arizona for candidate Carrie Lake, an outspoken election denier. And Youngkin addresses why he's spending so much time outside of the Commonwealth. The Republican Governors Association was really, really good to me. And so this is a chance for me to to repay the favor. And Youngkin also doubles down on his proposed changes to school policy after significant backlash from people who say he's limiting transgender student rights. Parents need to be in this role. Listen, the children don't belong to the state. They belong to families. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. And I'm Luke Garrett. It's no secret that Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin is a rising star in the Republican Party, who is no stranger to traveling across the country in an effort to boost high-profile races for conservatives. In the last few weeks alone, Youngkin has stumped in Michigan, Maine, Nevada, Kansas, Georgia, Oregon, and now Arizona. Carrie, you are awesome. That sounds from NBC News of Youngkin campaigning for Carrie Lake, who's running for governor in November. His jam-packed travel schedule is doing nothing to shut down rumors of a presidential run. But is the governor shirking his duties in Virginia? WTOP's Nick Ionelli got an interview with Youngkin and begins with his involvement in the race in Arizona. Governor Youngkin, you're in Arizona campaigning for Carrie Lake, and she's not exactly a moderate. While you campaigned as a moderate in Virginia, Carrie Lake has stuck to this issue, this claim that the 2020 election was corrupt and stolen. How do you respond to criticism that you are, in effect, supporting that message by supporting Carrie Lake? Well, let me begin with the fact that uh, Republican governors across the country have uh, outperformed Democrat governors. States run by Republican governors have uh, recovered faster from the pandemic. We've had faster economic growth. We've had uh, much better performance uh, across the board. And uh, and therefore, I believe every state deserves a Republican governor. And listen, not every Republican. Uh, we, we don't agree on everything, but we agree on a lot. And uh, let me tell you, the big issues that are facing uh, Arizona today and our crime and inflation and a wide open border uh, and uh, schools that folks want to make sure continue to educate their children well. And uh, these are the exact same issues that we're seeing across the nation. I mean, I was in I was in Oregon uh, last night with uh, Christine Drazen, who has just eked ahead in the polls. Uh, and we're about to see we're about to see a Republican governor in Oregon. And I think what we're going to see across the country is this recognition that Republican leadership in governor's offices is outperformed. And listen, I think every state deserves a Republican governor. And that's why we're working hard, just like the Republican Governors Association worked for me last year to help Republican candidates uh, hold their seats and earn new ones. And you mentioned that you don't agree with Republicans on everything. Are you referring specifically to that issue of claiming that the 2020 election was stolen? Yeah, I, I've said many times that uh, that Joe Biden's our president. Uh, he was elected our president. I, he's, I don't think he's doing a good job. I think that he is uh, really done some very damaging thing to our nation, including uh, weakness overseas. And and our economy is really racing towards, uh, sadly, a recession because of runaway inflation. Uh, I'm really frustrated uh, with the fact that they have undermined our entire energy independence. Uh, and I think that uh, our labor challenges are a result of bad policies coming out of Washington. Uh, and with that said, we've got to look forward. Uh, one of the things we did in Virginia was invest in our election process. I mean, people have had concerns. <laughs> Democrats have had concerns about election processes and Republicans have expressed really real concerns. And so my job as governor is to improve the process. And we've done exactly that in Virginia. We passed some very strong legislation last year in order to move private interests out of the voting process. So no more Zuckerbucks, as they were called. We're updating our voter rolls every week. And we, in fact, are making sure that every uh, mail-in ballot is immediately assigned back to the precinct it, was, it came from. So we're going to continue to invest in our election process. And I think that's the job for every governor. I know you've gotten the question about running for president, and you certainly are sounding like a more national candidate. I'm wondering if you could speak directly to Virginians when you are asked the question, why are you out of state so often? How do you respond to that? If you could speak directly to Virginians on that. Yeah, I've been very focused on being the best governor that I can be in Virginia. And I think we've had a fabulous first nine months. Uh, we've gotten everything in our agenda done and Virginia's moving. 
and our, our job growth has been strong. New companies are coming. We've been working hard on back in law enforcement and making sure that we, in fact, are bringing resources to, to make our communities safer. And we're working really hard to make sure our schools stand for excellence as opposed to the watered down standards that the previous administrations uh, allowed our children to suffer under. Uh, the Republican Governors Association was really, really good to me. And so this is a chance for me to, to repay the favor. And I've been uh, working to support incumbent Republican governors and, and a handful of challengers that we think can win. Uh, to that point, I also think that we're going to win a bunch of congressional races in Virginia. And uh, I think that uh, what we're going to see is the is the change in our it change in our House of Representatives come through the great Commonwealth of Virginia. And that's why I've also been working hard for candidates across Virginia, including great candidates in the second and the seventh and the tenth hung Hung Cow, Yesley Vega, and Jen Kiggins, along with others. And so I think this is a, a, a great chance as a Republican governor who I think uh, has uh, really had a chance to move a lot forward in the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, to also stand up for other Republican candidates, particularly our House candidates in Virginia and governor candidates across the country. Any thoughts on the Republican candidate for governor in Maryland, Dan Cox? Well, I, what I've what I've been focused on in in uh, in uh, efforts outside of Virginia are those races that the Republican uh, Governance Association has dug in on, and that's where I've been spending time, both incumbents and some of the challengers. Um, listen, I hope Dan wins, uh, and I do think that uh, Maryland Maryland uh, uh, Marylanders have seen great performance out of their Republican governor Larry Hogan, and I think that they should keep that in mind when they go to the polls. Governor, I know we have to wrap it up here, but I wanted to ask you about the Northern Virginia school systems that are vowing not to follow your guidelines that relate to transgender students and their use of pronouns in school. If you could please speak directly to the school systems that are refusing to adopt that policy. What is your response on that? Let me back up. And uh, our draft guidelines are fundamentally rooted in reestablishing the role of parents in these most important decisions. And uh, kids in Virginia have a right to have a parent involved in these decisions. And parents have a fundamental right in the Commonwealth to be the key decision maker with their children in these decisions. That's not at the expense of a trusted teacher or a, tr a trusted uh, counselor. But we've got to recognize this isn't controversial. And uh, parents need to be in this role. Listen, the children don't belong to the state. They belong to families. And, uh, and therefore, I expect that once we're through the comment period and uh, the final, our final uh, model policies are, are filed, that, that all school districts should and will adopt policies consistent with state law, consistent with those policies. And if they refuse? It's the law. And I think we've got to get out of this, this moment where people are saying, I'm not going to abide by a law that was passed last year by a Democrat-controlled House, a Democrat-controlled Senate, signed in the law by a Democrat governor. And we can't be in a moment where people can just pick the laws they want to abide by and the ones they don't. It's one of the big challenges that we're seeing across the Commonwealth. It's one of the reasons why I stood strong with law enforcement and mayors and Commonwealth's attorneys uh, earlier this week and announced our bold blue line is because we cannot allow prosecutors to choose which laws they're going to prosecute and the ones they're not. This is a time for us to recognize laws are on the books for reasons and we need to abide by them. And as you heard there, Nick had limited time with the governor of Virginia, but they ended on a really contentious issue, which is this student policy around transgender rights. We've been covering it on this podcast a lot. Mm -hmm. We've seen walkouts in schools in Northern Virginia, and we've also spoken to Democratic leaders in our region. Yeah, we spoke with the chair of the Board of Supervisors, Jeff McKay, about this issue. And it's funny because he, you know, you can go back and listen to it, but he said that. I think what he's doing is wrong. Um, I think we had model procedures in place, model policies and FCPS that were working and working quite fine for our kids. They were not disrupting learning or, or our children. Um, and so I have been outspoken about this. I will continue to be. It kind of harkens back to what are his political aspirations. Right. We'll see, I guess, how his profile grows in the Republican Party over the next year. Especially as we come up to 2024. That's by the experience of its hardworking members. And Steam after the break, locals we have another segment is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, magic HVAC, or refrigeration cheetahs. project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. 
For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602, changing lives. I'm Paul Wagner. Join me as I dig deep into the mysterious case of the Potomac River Rapist. Listen to Unknown Subject, Season 3 of WTOP's award-winning American Nightmare podcast series, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And before we go, we have this week's segment of DMV Dates. And we have someone new in the DMV Download Studio, Carrie Shokrai, a WTOP writer and reporter. Carrie, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So I'll start off this week's DMV Dates segment. This is your first time. So my date starts in and around the zoo in D.C. So you start with a brunch at Open City. They have fantastic brunch. So it's about noon. You know, you get there, you meet your date there. You get a fantastic meal. They have a good hash brown menu item. So you order that, have a, you know, talk, get to know them. And hash browns? Hash browns, yes. No, I love I love me some hash browns. Open City is a fantastic restaurant. They call themselves a funky gourmet diner. So they live up to that. After you've, you know, had your fill, you walk across Calvert Street down into Rock Creek and you find yourself on the Rock Creek Trail. You turn left, go north, towards the zoo and you go around the new recently opened up zoo loop trail i'm not sure if you heard of it but recently paved beautiful pedestrian bridge it goes right along the rock creek you know continue conversations there and then you get to the entrance the back entrance of the zoo and you make your way through the zoo where you'll find new cheetah babies there's some new yes very cool very who doesn't love baby cheetahs i i do not know if (laughs) if your date doesn't like baby cheetahs then maybe it's time to leave maybe it's time to end the date so you visit the baby cheetahs they were born october 4th so they're pretty fresh and cute and then you know at the end of the zoo trail once you get all the way back up to connecticut avenue you can decide at that point you know do i want to take this date to like a dinner because it'll be like a few hours after that you can get some drinks in cleveland park um, and then that's that's kind of your whole date. It's kind of an active date, but you know that that's the idea. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, my date is a magic show. It's Ooh. called the Magic Duel, and it's at the Mayflower Hotel in D.C. And it's a show where two guys battle it out for the title of D.C.'s best mag- magician. And there's lots and lots of audience participation. They like and- call you up. Yes. Whoa. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, it gave us a lot to talk about, actually. After the date. After the date, yes. Right, because yes. you're like, wow, how did the bunny get out of the hat, in other words? Yes, it gave us a lot to talk <laughs> about after the magic show. Yeah. And um, it was fun, and I really enjoyed it. And the Mayflower Hotel is located near Con- or off of Connecticut Avenue, so there's lots of restaurants and uh, things to do after you get out of the magic show. This is the first time on the DMV Date segment that magic has been uh, an event to go to. And I think it's perfect. You know, it's kind of like you're kind of uncertain after you see magic, you know, it kind of puts everyone in an interesting place. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Wow. Not it was bad. fun. I think my date is funner than yours. <laughs> I think it's better as well. <laughs> Honestly, the zoo is pretty cool, baby cheetahs, but magic, you can't beat that. What can you do? Gary, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. And that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. Uh, jumping back in, we're sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab, and our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance, and also tell literally every single person you see on the street, <laughs> hey, listen to the DMV Download. Why not? Give it a try. Oh my you can find us on social media where we post content every day. You can find out more about this podcast Oh yeah, at dmvdownload.com. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, online at wtop.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a good night.